if I had said three years ago that I was gonna have a song with Chris Brown, people would have said, just keep dreaming, you know what I mean? So it's like, I'm just happy that the, the I, I speak like I'm old, but I'm not really, but you know, the 13, 14 year old kids now coming up, they can look at me and see like, wow, when I'm 20, it could just be something completely, just a whole next thing. Scan on people, I am Chipmunk Champion. Yes, right now you're watching Amru Don TV. Peace. Diddy, Skepta, Resh, you know, how does that rate for you? Um, me and me and Diddy's pretty cool. You know, um, I I, I got um Kalina of Diddy Day money on my album, yeah. so it's pretty dope. We um, obviously we did the tracks, so and when they was here, they reached out to me, and then we 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 was just rolling, man. You know, it felt watching. You know, in in the midst of the moment, it was just normal for me because I know them. You know what I mean, but. When I watched back, it felt good, you know. I made, made sure I introduced Rich to him, you know, to the Kalina girls. Just made sure that he knew that it was Rich that he was fighting in the charts <laughs> at the moment. You know, it's, it was just beautiful, man. Right now, Rich, like, words can't explain how I feel about his successes, man. So, it was good. In terms of Rich, you, I mean, I know he's older than you, but yeah. you've helped him out in terms of, Publicity wise. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, put, yeah. you put him next to you. Um, yeah, it felt, you know, the thing is with, with me and Rex, he's from the estate down the road from me. So, like, he's seen me grow from little boy on a pedal bike, you know, to, to having, you know, on the route to success. You know, I see success as as a, a, a journey, not a destination. So, you know, things, things, the amount of things Rex has done for me, you know, I see him as like my mentor, you know, when it comes to lyrics wise and ETC. but where we come from and unless you get to see the wider world of music it, it's very easy to just have your mind just fixed on you know what's in front of you so you know i took wretch out to um la with me for a week just to see my producers and how we was going about recording my album etc and that was like a, a big eye opener not even just for him but for myself as well in terms of where we need to go with the music you know so um but the, the beauty about about Free Two is that he's like your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. So to have him at number five in the UK charts is like, I think I'm happier than he is. Yeah. Like, I'm gassed. Like I'm at home. Like, bro, like amen. Like wretch. That means I was saying to him because obviously things happened for me a bit quicker. But that was because I was I was able to adapt to the environments that I was put in. For instance, like wretch is the prime example of understanding that you know. If 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 number one by Tinchy and End Dubs wasn't made and didn't go number one, if I didn't go, if Oopsie Daisy made by me didn't go number one, he he understands that he wouldn't have been able to go with Tractor now yeah. to to commercial radio and it be accepted. And he's saying that also Skepta, um, I yeah. spoke to him about a week ago and he told me about um, the track Big that you guys done together. Yeah, like for you because that that is like. I went probably it's probably right, about yeah, and I showed I showed Chipmunk it one like one time he was going to a, a club one time and he's listened to it and he was like raw you get me and obviously he's been he's he's been more successful as a musician chart wise and you know fame life wise than I have been but he even felt it like raw is that how deep you're going Skepta he hasn't written a song like that do you know what I'm saying so he was like yeah like can I put a verse on it with Big. Skepta, we was going to a rave and he was like, Chip, hear this on his phone. And I was like, I was like, give me a verse. He was like, yes. I was like, he was like, you know what? Me and Sam were saying we want to put you on it. So when I went into the studio, like them, the, the words that were, were, were coming out of, you know, my thoughts at the time was just so right for that song. And in the midst of, you know, like, champion leaking, big leaking, um, and then the 2011 freestyle that I put out, everyone's seeing the direction that I'm going into because I feel that, you know, I'm still young, I still want to grow, I still want to experiment, but, you know, 
in the midst of things, everything I want to do now, want, it has to be from like the bottom of the heart, man. Because I feel that, you know, for instance, Champion, I didn't think radio was going to support that song for, for reasons that are not to do with music, but to do with politics. So now when it's on every single radio station, every single TV channel, that is more important to me than any chart position. Do you know what I mean? It's like, that's like minus one, you know, <laughs> for me, do you know what I mean? Because it's like, the country supporting that song shows that as a country we're standing for forgiveness. So that's like bigger than a number one. And it's, it's looking like it's going to be a big hit as well. So it's like a win-win for me. And not talking too much other artists though, but it seems like you actually are putting yourself in a position where with the whole thing with the champion and Chris Brown, yeah. as soon as that's been acceptable now, yeah. the year times three comes out. Yeah. So it's almost showing that you're, like you're saying, going to... I'm standing next yeah. to Chris saying, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah man, I'm think, I'm, I'm stand, like, champion as a song, like, I haven't had a, a bad thing said about the song, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's cool and I feel sometimes that's what it takes, you know. Some some people said to me like, oh, why did you work with Chris Brown? I, I just say like, go and ask Lil Wayne why he did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, forget about me. In the world of music, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing well in the UK, but there is a bigger world out there. Do you know what I mean? Like, Kanye West is on the Deuces remix. Like, don't ask me, ask them, yeah. because I'm accessible. Do you know what I mean? But I'll openly say the guy's amazingly talented. Champion is probably my most heartfelt single that I've ever released and it's had the biggest response from a song that I've ever released. I had like two and a half million views in a month. Like, I couldn't be happier, man. It's cool. And saying, I think their family was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, their family, that was my... Heartfelt single, okay, you know what single, I mean? Their yeah. family was like, yeah, heart on my sleeve, just, yeah, yeah hair, this is my life. But as a single, you know, it, it takes... People don't realise the, 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 the guts and the balls that it takes to, to go into your label and see this is what I want to go with, you know, a single where, where, where you're basically, you know, you just, it's just so real and it's just so heartfelt and the production's still hard, but the, the hook is still as commercially accessible as it possibly could be. Just trying to find, you know, I spent a lot of time before I actually came back out going around and saying to people, I'm just trying to find that halfway point where it's like my F64 meets Oopsie Daisy meets da -da 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 to try and please everyone. And it's, it's actually happening, man. So for me, it's past where it charts, it's past all of that, it's past saying oh, I want this, so it's just like, I just want to feel good, man. And I feel you came good from a scene that wasn't creating songs to fit radio and you've done it. Yeah. Still being 20, you know, when you go home and think, you know, aside of the money, yeah. aside of from being recognised, do you feel that you have... That I get the yeah, like, respect. Honestly, not that I couldn't care less, but I feel that. The second people have nothing to say about me, that's when I'm going to be worrying. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it be good, whether it be bad, whether you dislike me, whether you like me, whether you're a fan, whether you're a hater, that's turning into a fan, because that's what's happened in the past couple of months from the music that I've released. Like, the second people have nothing to say about me, I, I always say, like, the second someone doesn't want to make a diss track about me, that's when I'm going to be thinking, Chip, you're doing something wrong. Do you know what I mean? Because I feel like through everyone's journey, you're going to have people that, you know, just want to say something. So it's like, the second you let that start to affect you, that's the second you think you, you stop pleasing your fans and you're trying to please people that just don't even want to like you. They're like, yeah. why am I going to do that? It's like, it's just wrong, man. Yeah. So you've got Kerry Hilson yeah. and the bad man himself, Movado, yeah. and a few others. And selecting those. Tell me how does it work out? You know, do you reach out to them? Do they reach out to you? you know, um, what was your selection process for picking those artists? You know, Movado was someone that from the beginning I've said that I need to do a song with Movado. I just think, how can every song be a banger? You know what I mean? So it's like, okay. There was a point where, you know, I reached out to a lot of UK artists to work on my album yeah, and I'll openly say they all said no. Like one way or, or another, they all said no. And I kind of understand the reason why is like, people, people, it's not a bad thing to use each other. That's the first thing I would say, but it's like, people gravitate to what's new. You know, as soon as your new guy buzz wears off, that's when it's time for your music to do the talking. You know what I mean? You're not new, you're not the new thing anymore. There's no gas. It's not like, have you heard so-and-so, he's sick. It's like, it's just your music. So I'm not gonna talk about the people who said no, but there was a lot of people that said no, you know what I mean? So it's like, it left me in a place where I was like, you know, obviously like people like Rich is on my album, 
and you know, people like Rex and Skepta, we're going to be working with each other until the day we die. We all live like 10 minutes up the road from each other. So it's like, it left me in a place where I felt like, okay, cool. I don't know, maybe it's because of competition reasons or I don't, maybe, you know, people, I don't want to change my image. I can't, maybe I'm not fitting certain criteria, chip. All right, cool, at home, what do you listen to? What are you into? And you know who actually sat me down? It was Semtex. And he was like, I was playing him my, my new record, and he was like, this is sick, man. I had one tune called, um, like, I had loads of tunes, but for instance, I had a tune called Follow My Lead, and he was like, go and get Justin Timberlake on this. I was like, huh? He was like, what do you mean, man? You're like a number one artist in the UK. Like, you got the power to go and get who you want on your record. And I was like, he was like, you like Chris Brown, right? I was like, yeah, man. He was like, look, look at Deuces, that's ringing off crazy. Go get him, man. I'm like, Sam Tex is telling me go and get Chris Brown on my album. I'm like, all right, Sam, are you gonna phone him? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, he was like, you got Trey songs, right? I was like, yeah. He was like, think of me, go and get them, man. You know what I mean? It's like, your second album is what gonna is, is what's either gonna cement you as an artist or let people walk all over you as an artist. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna make this cement me, man. Went back to. My, my studio with my producer Harmony, who's from the UK but lives in LA now. And we was like, let's turn these songs into events, man. You know what I mean? Did champion. And that, for me, it was about having the right song for the right artist as well. So I wouldn't, there isn't a singer in the world, dead or alive, that I would put on champion over Chris Brown. You know what I mean? So that happened. And then how it is over there is like, everyone's kind of affiliated or comes around. So. People was coming into the studio and just hearing my songs and saying like, we want to be a part of this. And then when they heard it's me and then obviously like, oh, ringing bells in the UK, they was on it. So Kerry Olsen came through, you know, the, the, the Trey song song, we, we sent to him. He, he loved it. You know, the song that Trey songs is on was the one that Semtex heard and said that I should holler at Chris Brown for. But I thought like, if I want to do something with Chris, I want to capture the emotion of what's going on in my life and his right now. So. Trey songs, um, Movado, the Movado tune, Dread, I was just waiting for the, that one came last, Dreddy made the beat, I was like, this is it, so we hit his management, it was like, yo, let's do it, back and forth over the internet, and then when he came here to um, to do his promo, and I can't remember what country I was in, but I wasn't in the country, but I'm going to Jamaica next month to shoot the video. You saying that transition would not have sounded the way it did if all the people that you hit up said yeah they want to work with Sa sound wise yeah. sound wise it would have sounded the same mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been as eventful right. if you know the uk artist kind of never lodged like chipmunk at 20 in 2011 is that the peak of where people can be now in terms of an artist i mean as of today uh, you know like a, you know like at, a dizzy at was age 20. at age 20. you know dizzy when he done yeah. it that's as high as it can go Damn. when you had the others you know so solid at that point do you reckon you're now the pinnacle of what of you can what? do at age 20 now, in today. the UK yeah. coming from the underground scene. Yeah. You know, I, I'll just leave that for people to mm -hmm. decide because the second I say yes, it's going to come across as arrogance, not confidence. Mm -hmm. But it, I just, you just check out the other artists that are my age and, you know, came from that, came from the same scene as me and just see what they're up to, see what I'm up to. You know, not that there's, I think, I think what, what separates me is, is drive. I feel that, you know, like, I think, honestly, talent accounts for 20% of how far you can go in this country anyway. Everything else is, you know, where your business brings that and, and the team you've got behind you as well. And I'll openly say, I had a good team. I've got a very good team behind me. But where it's, it's a bunch of people, I will openly say, it's a bunch of people that came from the streets and learned the same way I did. When we, when we got together and started, started, none of us knew a damn thing. There isn't someone that's, you know, a hierarchy in this place or that place that's helping me out. It's just a bunch of people that actually came from the streets and studied music and wanted to go for it. So, um, age 20, I don't know, what was, it's, it's like, it feels good. And I don't want it to be a thing of, look at what Chipmunk's doing at his age. I want it to be a thing of, look at what you could do at my age.